continuing with number 10 for Mac 1105 Chapter 2 Review, um, there was one thing I neglected to mention in the problem. It asked for the domain as well as the range, and I believe I only gave um, the domain. So going on to look at the range, when they ask you for the range, those are the Y values. And really that means how low and how high does the graph go. So the, at the very bottom of this parabola in number 10, you see it dipping all the way down to negative 5, and then how high it goes would be all the way up to positive infinity with respect to the y values. So you're going to mention negative 5 as the smallest value on the graph, and the y values go up through infinity. negative 5 should have a bracket around it because that is actually a solid point on the graph. Okay, so that is the domain and the range. For number 11, you're going to choose the um, best option for the intercepts they're asking for here. And there are different kinds of intercepts. There are the x-intercepts. I'll name those first. It appears that this goes through, this graph goes through negative 6 on the left side, and the other leg goes through positive 6. So those intercepts would be, that point right there is called 6, 0. That is one of the intercepts. It's the x-intercept. This point is negative 6, 0 another x-intercept, so we need the answer with negative 6 and positive 6 in the x position. That would work out. And then for the y-intercept, um, this is 0 down at negative 6. So that would be this answer right here, choice A. Oh, don't forget, there's three intercepts showing there. Two on the x-axis, one on the y-axis. Moving on to number 12. When you're answering whether it is increasing or decreasing, you're going to scan the graph from left to right, following along the curve, observing whether you are falling or rising. So as you start on the leftmost side of the graph, traveling along that curve, you are falling, 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 all the way until you get to what appears to be an x value of 3. Now I'm going to mention that one of the downfalls of giving an answer regarding decreasing or increasing is that students forget that they can only use the x values to name the interval. So again, when you're out here, keep in mind that on this parabola, when you start on the left side of the graph, that leg really travels out to negative infinity. So if you're considering where does the decreasing start, all the way out in negative infinity, because if you were going to the very outer edge of that leg and you know that it keeps expanding, you're out in negative, you're out um, in x values called negative infinity when the decrease begins and you keep falling, falling, falling until you get to the x value called 3. So the decreasing portion, portion, which is all that they've asked for here, is negative infinity, 2, negative 3. And because it's changing behaviors right at, or sorry, positive 3, this is positive 3. Because it's changing behaviors at that number called 3, you should put a parenthesis because that actual number can be described as the end of the decreasing interval, but also the beginning of the increasing interval. So different behaviors at that number. In number 13, again, travel along the graph from left to right. When you're increasing, it's because you are going up on the graph. In other words, the y values are going up. However, you can only use the x values to answer and name the interval. So as you're traveling along this graph, you're decreasing, decreasing, decreasing until you get to an x value of 0, and then all of a sudden from 0 to an x value of 3. 
So it starts at zero and it ends at three. You are increasing. Okay, so we're going to say from zero to three is the increase. Okay, moving on to number 14. Use the graph of the given function to find any relative max and relative min. Okay, so as you are looking at this graph, this graph represents the function x cubed minus 3x squared plus 1. And you are going to name the maxima and the minima. So the maxima would be this high point, and that high point is called 0 on its x-coordinate, 1 on its y-coordinate. That would be the maxima maximum point. The minima is the minimum point, which would be located right here. Now, they're not the actual ultimate max and mins, but in the location that they're in, which is called relative, they are the max. This is the max in this location, and this is the min in this location, even though it really does get higher and higher and really does get lower and lower. This point is called 2 and negative 3. Okay, so this is the max, this is the min. Make sure you're clear about which point you're giving for which answer. Okay, moving on to number 15. In number 15, you are given the function f of x is equal to x cubed minus 3x. Ask whether this is even, odd, or neither. You can look at the powers to answer this question. This term is an odd power. This term is an odd power. And since all the powers are odd, this can be called an odd function. Number 16. Problem number 16, you're given a piecewise function. f of x is equal to negative 4x minus 2 if your x value that you're evaluating at is less than 1. However, you will use 3x plus 5 if the x value that you're plugging in is greater than or equal to 1. So the question off to the side is then to evaluate the function at 3. So all you're doing in these problems is choosing which piece of the piecewise function is appropriate for the value that you're plugging in. So you're plugging in an x value of 3, which classifies as a number greater than or equal to 1, so you're going to be using this piece right here. So the function with a 3 plugged in, being that you are required to use this piece, 3x plus 5, since your x value is greater than or equal to 1, this is what they're actually telling you to evaluate at, which means you're plugging in that value. All these are, are comments about um, how to choose which of the functions to use. And this number combined with these comments helps you to choose which one. This is going to be 9 plus 5 turns out to be 14. So in problem, you can just give the 14. You can even give it as a point if you'd like. But this is fine right here. Okay, number 17. Problem number 17. Again, you're given a piecewise function. Piece at the top is the expression 5x plus 5. You're to use that piece if your x value is less than 3. And you're to use this piece, 4x minus 5, if your x value that you're plugging in is greater than or equal to 3. So the question off to the side is pick the appropriate function and evaluate at 7. Okay, so you are to use this bottom piece of the function 4x minus 5 if your x value that you're plugging in is greater than 3. It is. So you're going to plug in 7 using the bottom piece of the function. So it's 4 times 7 minus 5, which would be 28, minus 5, which would be 23. What's your answer for that?
Okay, number 18. Number 18, you are given f of x is 5x plus 9. I'm going to point out that these problems are a particular sore spot on the test. You're finding what's called the difference quotient, and you need to use this formula to find the difference quotient. This difference quotient becomes a pretty hot topic in the courses to follow. It's the basis of a lot of calculus concepts, and we study it further in pre-cal. So in this, you're going to use this formula, and you're going to use this plan on this function. So this says, take your function, this is your function, plug in x plus h. You've got to know how to read this formula. Take the function, plug in x plus h. This is what you're plugging into. So it's 5 times, and where there's an x, you're plugging in x plus h. So it says that command right there. Then it says, and don't forget, this is the entire, you want to write this entire function plugging in x plus h as it indicates here just where the x is. Okay, so that's your first shot. Then you're going to go minus. I would close off anything that happens after a minus just so that if there are several terms you'll remember to use the minus on all of them because that is one of the things that makes students get it wrong. This says minus the original function with no changes and nothing plugged in. Then you are going to divide all of that by 8. So now we're going to get after the top, simplifying as we go along. This is 5x plus, distribute that 5 to the h as well. Bring in that 9. Don't forget to distribute the negative to this 5x as well as the 9. All of this is going to be divided by h. Continue moving with that. It's 5x. Take away 5x further down in the expression. There's a positive 9 and a negative 9. They cancel as well. So you're left with a numerator of 5h and a denominator of h. In the end, your answer is just 5. Okay, number 19. In problem 19, you're doing the same thing. Only this time, the function is 7x plus 1. So this should be fairly easy because of the function that I'm giving you. When you get into the next class, you're going to be doing this same difference function, only on something that's squared um, or things that have radicals. And they'll begin to talk about, you know, what the application of is for the difference function. We talked about it a little bit in class also. All right, so now we're going to be using this function. We're going to be following the game plan. The formula for the difference function is, one more time, to take the function and plug in x plus h and then subtract the original function. That's what you do on the top of this quotient. Okay, so we're going to take the function, 7x minus 1, dump in x plus h, there's the entire function, then we're going to subtract the original function. You can either use brackets or parentheses here. And then we're going to take all of that and divide by h. Okay, so here's the, the function with x plus h um, plugged in. Let's distribute that 7 to both the x and the h. Minus 7x plus 1 divided by h. Once again, you see that the 7x is canceled because you have a positive and a negative 7x, as well as the negative 1 and the positive 1, leaving you with 7h in the numerator, h in the denominator for a final answer of 7. That completes 15 through 17. Or, excuse me, 15 through 19.